Welcome back to the channel, welcome to another video. I'm currently on the Metro and I'm on my way to meet Oli. Today we're going to experience a digital exhibition and it's an exhibition that's been put on by um, the Palace Museum and Tencent. Now, Palace Museum is part of the uh, Forbidden City uh, in Beijing. So uh, yeah, let's go find Oli and uh, get to the exhibition. Of course, this is where we're going to find Ollie. I'm going to find him. You're not filming me at McDonald's, are you? I am. <laughs> Bath box. Yeah. We've arrived. After stealing one of Ollie's chicken nuggets in McDonald's. Yeah, I wasn't too happy about that, but there we are. <laughs> anyway, we've arrived at the first exhibit which is called a naked eye 3D. Do you know why it's called a naked eye 3D? Why is that? Because you can see the 3D with your naked eye. You, you don't you, need you, some special glasses. But you, you're specky right now. You've got the glasses on there, so yeah. you better take them off. You don't need them on. <laughs> yeah, but now I can't <laughs> hardly see it. No, you can't see it at all. <laughs> what we have here is a vase, and this is displayed at eight times its normal size. And the thing about this is, you see these goldfish. The goldfish are really special in, in Chinese because it kind of means like prosperity and wealth. So you'll see a lot of pictures on walls in restaurants or businesses with goldfish on them. You see goldfish in a lot of places because it, it symbolizes wealth and prosperity. Seems to be a thing in, a bit of a staple in Chinese culture in general, doesn't it? About it is, having yeah. like different animals represent different meanings like wealth, prosperity, longevity, uh -huh. look. Don't fall over uh, one. Yeah. That's not a good idea, is it, to fall over? Da -da. Oh, man. Oh, man, you know what this reminds me of? Go when on. I was about four years old, they had this, like, telescope thing I put to my eye and I oh. turned the end. I know what you're on about, yeah. It's, um, oh, what's it called? I oh, know, kaleidoscope. Are you shaking? You'd have the beads in the end, you'd make all patterns. That's right, yeah. Ah, when I touch these, this pattern changes. Look. Oh, yeah. Oh. I recognise this bit, however, I don't see the, the famous picture that's usually hanging above it, but. You can see the big red doors, mate. Yeah, but they ain't as big as the ones that the, the real Forbidden City, are they? No, they're massive. Yeah, they're massive. And do you know that the Forbidden City is the largest well-preserved wooden palace in the world? Yeah. And how many visitors does it get? Yeah, I was just looking. It gets over 15 million visitors every year. 15 million a year? Yeah. That's like more than a million a month. It's kind of a lot. That's a lot of people, in it, walking around there? That is a lot. Now, this is pretty cool, isn't it? It's like, it's, wow. <laughs> wow. Like, have you noticed when I'm like walking on them, they're, they're all opening up? That's kind of what they've tried to do with this place, isn't it? Make it kind of interactive. Yeah, it's pretty good though, isn't it? It's like, they've created a, it's kind of very peaceful. It's pretty cool, man. It's yeah, nice. you could have a bit of a meditation session in here. What you've got here are bats and peaches, and there again, they're both sort of famous things within Chinese culture. You often see these two things together. One of the things that I think is good about these kinds of places is that if you don't have the opportunity to go to the Forbidden City in Beijing, maybe you, you've never traveled to China, or maybe you just are Chinese and you live in Shenzhen and you can't get to Beijing, this allows it to be seen all over the world, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the digitalization of, of, of all the patterns and artifacts and things just allows them to be 
seen pretty much anywhere where you've got an internet connection. Right, I'm pretty sure this would have taken a hell of a lot of expertise and time and effort and money to bring to people, you know? Absolutely. Technical support is done by Tencent, which I remember like one of the biggest tech companies probably in the world, never mind just China. Tencent are the ones who did WeChat, right? Correct. So this has got to be probably the biggest bowl I've ever seen. Can't imagine how many Cocoa Pops or Weetabix you'd fit in there, man. But oh my word. That would be a big breakfast, wouldn't it? That would be a big <laughs> breakfast. But this is really cool. It's like, they've not only got it all projected on the floor, they've got it projected on the bowl and all the walls. There must be about 50 projectors in each room. Yeah, it's so cool. But it's seamless, isn't it? You wouldn't yeah. know it's coming from... It's really good. You wouldn't know it's coming from more than one. You wouldn't. It's, it's so good how it's done. This has like lots of different changing patterns. So yeah, this is the um, cranes and the lotus flowers. Is it lotus flowers? Yeah. Yeah, lotus flowers. And then you get other ones you'll see in a minute. And these all represent different, different things. I find it kind of nuts that like these kinds of things are not able to be done by many people around the world anymore, are they? And these were done thousands of years ago, some of these were. That's, that's what I mean, and like probably more people were able to do it back then than now. Yeah, yeah, the skills have been, been lost, isn't it? You the know? skills have been lost, yeah. That's why it's important to put them into digital form so they, they're never gonna be... Never lost. Never yeah. lost, yeah. So all around the exhibition, you'll see these QR codes, and if you scan these, Basically, you get more information about the exhibit in the exhibition. But not only that, WeChat has many programs for pretty much all sightseeing things around China. And you can like book tickets, find out more information, find out more about the things within the exhibit. So that's all on WeChat, that is. I do think Chinese people tend to have a, a passion for their own country's history a lot more than maybe some other countries. I can speak for the UK, for example, but here it's kind of a, it's a big deal and they're very passionate about the length of, of their country's since, history. Since coming to China, I actually really would like to learn a bit more about the history of China because it's got such a long history. Okay, so I've read a bit about this. Yeah? Yeah, this, is, this represents the seasons and what they're trying to do in here, there's, there's many patterns that are used in the sort of, um, windows and doors in Forbidden City. Um, and this, this is the one that they're using for winter, which is like a, it's kind of a honeycomby thing. You can see it's snowy. And then this season will be spring. And you can obviously see here, they've got this different pattern. You know, all over the buildings in the Forbidden City, all, the, all this is done with wood in the, in the, like the windows. It's like a little, uh mystery what you're going to go into in it when yeah. you go into each room. Hey, up. Wow. Look at this one. Actually, this is a place where in the real Forbidden City you can't actually go. It's closed to the public. Do you know really? why? Why? Because basically that it's made of a special kind of wood which is very, very difficult to preserve. So in order to keep it preserved. They don't want it open to like the public or the elements and stuff, so they keep it closed. So what they've done here, they've recreated this. And this would have been, this, as you, this is, this is the big man's chair. The emperor would have sit, <laughs> sat here. And uh, this was the painting on the wall he, he had. Uh, they've really done a good job here with the sound as well. They have like, nine channels of sound so as you walk around you can pick up all the different like different sounds coming from different directions it's pretty cool man different animals cranes birds yeah you got the storm happening now yeah i must say i, I find these kind of art so i'm not a big fan of like art i find walking around art is boring but when it's like this and it's all kind of interactive and video i find it way more interesting because it's like kind of comes to life with all the sound and the video around i mean right. to do something like this i think it's really cool man 
Here we have four windows, and these windows represent the four seasons. Window one is uh, <laughs> spring. <laughs> Window two is summer, cranes. Window three is autumn. And window four is winter. Do you know what these remind me of? Go on. Do you remember a programme on British TV called um, Play School? Today we're looking through the round window or the arched window. I used to love that. Yeah, you know what I'd love? I'd, I'd love something like this to be able to be projected on my wall at home. You could like, when it's a cold day outside, you could put like hot sunshine. And when it's a warm day, you could put snow and winter and it'd give you that bit of an ambience feeling of different seasons. Just so you know, that's a, a bit of an ambience feeling. Yeah. And Bosch, there you have it, another tour. Now I must say I did enjoy that. I thought that was very interesting indeed. And hopefully, you did too. If you did, and if you learned something, it would be nice if they dropped the thumbs up, wouldn't it? It would, absolutely. Anyway, we will see you in the next one for now. As Take always, care. take care.